today we on a hustle, Death Star Entertainment lady. And you already know we're here with the rich boy. For sure, so, you know what I'm saying? We're gonna <laughs> throw them D's on it. All the mates wanna take tight, no slick, just bought a Cadillac, took it to the top shop. Boy, really do a party, look at him. We can buy the boy all night, look at him. Today we're talking about Maurice Richards, aka Rich Boy. You may remember him for his smash hits like Throw Some D's and Drop, which absolutely popped just before the tens. Unfortunately, issues with his label led to a long delay between his first and second albums, which led to the man being a one album wonder despite releasing multiple works in the time before and since. Today he still reigns king over his glory days, but unfortunately no longer has quite the reach, impact, or fanbase. From a $300,000 judgment to completely dropping off the map, let's break down the career of Rich Boy. What up guys, Ali here and welcome to Ali Talks Music. Add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music as well. And don't forget to subscribe and hit the notification bell. Now let's get into the video. Rich Boy had a fairly generic upbringing as far as rappers go. He was born Maurice Benjamin Richards in Alabama. He completed high school and attended the University of Tuskegee majoring in mechanical engineering before eventually dropping out to pursue his rap career. After dropping out, Rich Boy was always in pursuit of knowledge and this mindset even extends into his religious beliefs. When asked about his earlier study of Buddhism, he expanded. I study a little of everything. If you name it, I probably have studied it already or will study it in the near future. It's important for me to have understanding and that was one of the best methods for me to accomplish understanding in my own life. The more you understand the world, the more your perception of how everything works is shaped. He began to realize how the universe works as a whole and we are just one within that universe. We can buy the boy all night, look at him. I can show you what a stick like, look at him. Now before dropping out of university, Rich made music in his spare time but did not give it his full attention until after leaving university. Thereafter, he began dropping independent material that spread like wildfire locally before catching the attention of legendary producer Polo da Don. Polo was so impressed with what he heard that he flew Rich Boy over to Atlanta in order to keep working more. Nigga Knight and Polo da Don, you know what I'm saying? They couldn't nigga it up. They opened the door for me, you know what I'm saying? They gave me a chance to display my talent. That's what I did. Meanwhile, Rich hustled so hard to ensure that when he landed in Atlanta, he stayed there. Through his sheer grind, he landed a signing with Zone 4 through Interscope Records and immediately began working on his debut album. At the same time, he began spreading his name and scoring features wherever he could. One of his first major appearances was on Ludacris' Disturbing the Peace compilation album around 2005. The track he appeared on was called Break a Nigga Off alongside Little Fate and Gangsta Boo. Break a nigga off, break a nigga yeah. off. Other notable features included 2007's Must Hate Money, off Drake's Comeback Season mixtape, and a freestyle with Stat Quo on DJ Ideal and Jermaine Dupri's mixtape The Bottom Volume 5, which was dropped around 2005. He also dropped a mixtape of his own around 2006 called Bring It to the Block to warm his audiences up for his official debut album. By 2007, he had generated enough buzz to drop his own self-titled debut album and what an album it was. The album was preceded by a single in late 2006 called Throw Some D's featuring Polo Da Don, a song that rocketed up the charts and eventually went platinum. Yo, I love that song. I love that song. I think everybody's feeling that song right now. What inspired that? Oh, uh, my actually, you know what I'm saying, bought a leg for real. Oh, uh, when my mama saw the new car that I bought, she was like, you know, you need to paint it a different color or even throw some D's on it or something. It just stuck with me, so I just made a song out of it. 
The album debuted at number 3 on the Billboard 200 and sold about 112,000 copies in the first week. Another single was released from the album called Boy Look Here, but as a whole it sadly went unnoticed. Now I mentioned earlier that Richard Boy's first album sold about 112,000 copies in the first week. So let's compare these numbers to other albums that came out that year. Timberland's Shock Value came out in that year and it sold 138,000 copies in the first week. And Timberland is not really a rapper per se. Kanye West dropped Graduation and it almost sold a million copies in the first week. 50 Cent dropped Curtis, it sold about 700,000. Jay-Z dropped American Gangsta, which sold about 400,000. And Lupe Fiasco dropped The Cool, which sold about 143,000 copies in the first week. Now from the looks of things, Rich Boy's album did okay numbers. But if I remember correctly, numbers like this back then were not very good. Now around 2007, he also landed on the cover of Double XL as part of their 2007 freshman class. He also got a BET award for Rookie of the Year and seemed to be truly headed for the start. And fortunately, right at the height of his success, Rich Boy was plagued by a ghost from his past. Around 2008, the rapper was sued by tax accountant Chaz Mosley for an alleged road rage incident dating back to around 2005. In the incident, Rich Boy was driving in his Cadillac with his brother Irving O. Richards when Irving fired an assault rifle a minimum of 10 times into another vehicle driving behind them. Mosley, while admittedly escaping from the incident unscathed, claimed that a piece of shrapnel from one of the shots hit him in the head. After the incident, the accountant sued both brothers for the alleged attack, and while Irving pled guilty and received a 10-year sentence, Rich Boy got off with probation and a whopping $337,500 judgment. Now, after failing to pay the full amount to Mr. Mosley, Mosley's legal team pursued Rich Boy all the way to Atlanta in a bid to claim the outstanding debt. Man that was shot sued you and was awarded 300k. Did you feel that that was unfair and just? Nah, I felt like I needed it to teach me a lesson. Cause really, my anger can be the end of a person life that didn't deserve it. You know what I'm saying? So I got to be a man and sometimes I say I wasn't right. Or I need to be better. I need to be smarter at my decision. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like, you know, I ain't getting nothing out of the situation if I just walk away and say I ain't doing nothing wrong. Despite his heavy fine, Rich remained focused on his future and his career and put a lot of his efforts into his next steps as a rapper. Hyped up the marginal success of his debut, Rich continued to pump out music for his fans. People want to know, is Rich Boy still Rich Boy? Oh yeah, no, I, I, I never consider myself rich yet. You know what I'm saying? You ain't rich until you get up in them hundreds of millions in that day. Right, right, right. 2008, he dropped the mixtape Bigger Than The Mayor and dropped a couple more mixtapes the next year. In late 2009, he began talking about his sophomore offering to be titled Resurrected in Diamonds and which was confirmed to have production work from both Dr. Dre and longtime collaborator Polo de Don. The first single off the album was called Drop and while it did not blow up like Throw Some D's, it did get a lot of respect online and amongst the hip hop community. Several well-known remixes were made by then up-and-coming artists including Errol Sweatshirt, Childish Gambino, and Kid Cudi. Another single off the album was called She Loves Me featuring Polo the Don but unfortunately it went completely unnoticed. She loves me. Resurrected in Diamonds was a strong pivot from his original style, one which paid homage to his proud African heritage. It's called Resurrected in Diamonds because it's like, you know, Africans were rich in Africa. They had diamonds, gold and all that shit, so we lost the ball when we were put into slavery. But now you see niggas getting it back, like diamonds and shit rolling with their crew. The album didn't have an official release date, but was supposed to come out in early 2011. Meanwhile, in addition to planning his sophomore album, Rich Boy dropped another mixtape with 26 tracks around 2010, titled The Life and Times of Carter Benjamin. Unfortunately, after a while, he started to have issues with his label and they kept pushing his album back. Undeterred, he went on to drop more mixtapes. Thereafter, he parted ways with Zone 4 and Interscope, briefly going independent before signing with E1 Music. 
Right, you know, I've been putting music together the whole time, you know, just like any other artist. But, um, you know, the situation where I had certain things recorded that was um, under contract with Interscope mm -hmm. that I couldn't release. So, you know, um, to make a long story short, I just started with this new album, E1. So, we put a new album together within the past year, and, you know, we're putting that out. It's called Break the Pot. I'll just say the chemistry wasn't right for me as an artist over at Interscope. At times there may have been too much of this or not enough of that. So ultimately it just wasn't the right recipe. Rich Boy also reflected on the shelved Resurrected in Diamonds and what that album truly meant to him. The bigger picture of Resurrected in Diamonds was being in a bad situation but being able to beat it and come up out of it. When you're able to come out of any bad situation and stand with a smile on your face, you've been Resurrected in Diamonds. When I came up with that, I was just standing in front of a mirror looking at myself and I had a diamond necklace on. I just couldn't help but to think if this was back during slavery times, that same chain would have been a rope. It just felt like we as a people have overcome so much that we could have been resurrected in diamonds in today's era. Though the album sounded like a beautiful and multi-dimensional piece of art, Diamonds was never to be, and shortly after his signing with E1, Rich dropped another album. His sophomore attempt was Break the Pot, which shared a name with its leading single. Unfortunately, the, the album was a flop, and Rich Boy truly fell out of the spotlight after this. He dropped a couple of albums over the next few years, some of which are very difficult to find. In 2015, he dropped the album Featuring, and in 2016, he followed it up with Chevy Music. 2017 brought young, wild, the rich trill memoirs, and it wasn't until 2020 that he tried again with To The Max. I don't think nobody got no 95, I don't know. Let me ask. No 95, <laughs> straight 66, homie. It's overtime over here. Followed closely by 2021's Big Rich EP. Recently, his latest offerings have been 2021's Rich Baby and 2022's Bring It to the Block. Technically, Rich Boy is still very active in the music industry. He has consistently dropped project after project over the years, and from the looks of things, he's going to continue to do so. Man, I've been, you know, working like every other artist, you know. Just trying to put the best music I can together, trying to get my situation right. You know, I own switched over labels. At the end of the day, Rich Boy is essentially a one-hit wonder. Throw Some D's was the biggest hit of his career, and he failed to follow it up with something greater or on the same level. He still performs and is available for booking. You can catch him on Instagram under the handle at richboy 21st and on Twitter under the same handle, although he's fairly inactive on both sites. He gets about 480,000 monthly listeners on Spotify, and his most listened to songs are off his first album. Throw Some D's, Throw Some D's the Remix, Good Things, Boy Looka Here, and Get This Paper. <laughs> so what you, where you been at, man? Man, I've been, you know, working like every other artist, you know. Just trying to put the best music I can together, trying to get my situation right. You know, I um, switched over labels. Um, I went from um, Interscope to E1 now, you know what I'm saying? But, um, you know, we made a million dollars over at, um, I made my first million with um, Interscope. I'm trying to make my second million, you know what I'm saying, over here. That's it for me, it's your boy Ali. What happened to Rich Boy in your opinion? Let me know down below. Video requests, let me know as well. Also, add me on Instagram at Ali Talks Music. Till next time, peace.